Good evening, everyone. Please stand for prayer and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. I would like to invite our school chaplain, Father Jeff Burton, to lead us in our opening prayer. We begin all things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O God, Almighty Father, we come to you tonight with hearts filled with gratitude. We are grateful for the contributions of the graduating class of 2022, what they have made to Bishop Knoll Institute. We thank them for entering into the journey of personal and spiritual growth these past four years. Help them to recognize that you are always with them. May your spirit speak loudly in their words and in their deeds. We're grateful for their parents and families, for the sacrifices that they made during these years to ensure that Bishop Knoll might be able to form them, body, mind, and soul. As their children transform into adults, may the bond of love continue to grow. We're grateful for our leadership, our faculty, and our staff. It indeed takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a cohesive team to send them into adulthood, prepared to meet life's challenges, whatever they may be, with grace and compassion. But most of all, we are grateful for you, O oh God. You always walk with us throughout this journey of life. Continue to be the inner spark in the lives of these young men and these young women. May the light of Christ burn brightly in their hearts so that all may know that they are Christians by the love they share. As warriors, they head into the world. Watch over them, guard them, keep them in your care. But most of all, give them the courage they need to live this life and live it to its fullest. And bless these men and women in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening, Dr. Joseph Makrovich, Superintendent of Schools, Father Jeff Burton, School Chaplain, President Paul Mullaney, board members, faculty, staff, parents, families, and of course, class of 2022. It is with great honor. It is with great honor that I preside to today over tonight's 99th commencement. Let me begin with parents. 
As a parent, after Mass, I reflected on that moment when I heard my child's first heartbeat. From that moment, we, as parents, fell in love with these beautiful beings that are our children. As a parent, during the most uncertain times of our lifetime, you entrusted your greatest gift to Bishop Knoll. You entrusted us to support you in molding a young disciple, mind, body, and soul. Thank you, parents, for your sacrifice. Thank you for sharing your gift with us. I pray that you feel that these four years have developed your child into a young adult that is ready to face whatever challenges life may and will toss their way. Parents, thank you for sharing a piece of your heart with us. Teachers, thank you for your dedication to your craft. Thank you for taking young adults and forming them into young disciples. This year was challenging. We were back and forth between holding deadlines and trying to be compassionate. We questioned ourselves. We questioned our decisions, and some may have even questioned our profession. Our hearts have skipped many beats in the past two years. I ask the teachers to look out into the eyes of those that you have impacted. Today, 101 students, graduates, stand in front of you proudly as you have provided them the tools to persevere and move forward. Thank you teachers for your dedication and for being the hands and feet of Christ our Lord. Finally, and most importantly, class of 2022, as I look across the sea of blue and gold, I stay true to the statement that I made on your freshman orientation. Bishop Knoll has prepared you for the next steps in life. Whether you are going to college, you are attending a trade school, or you are going to the military or workforce, all of you are ready to use the gifts and talents that God has blessed you with. Every single one of you is better and more improved than when you started. Sure, it wasn't easy. Some of you faltered, some of you persevered, some of you are still in the process of figuring it all out. The admirable part about this class is when you falter, somebody was close by to support you and help you get it together or be put back together. When you persevered, somebody in your class was cheering you on and wishing nothing but the best for you. And let's call it what it is, class of 2022, we are all in the process of figuring it out. We, at the Bishop, as a Bishop Knoll community, stand with you in trusting that our Lord will help you find your path. This morning, when I woke up, I had a little extra time. I sat in the sun for 15 minutes and simply let the sun hit my face. After all, students, this glow does not come naturally. This moment in the sun was an indicator for me of three things. One, God gifted me with another day to do his work. Two, God gifted me with energy and warmth and a brief break. Three, God gifted me another opportunity to send 101 Bishop Knoll warriors off into the sunset. Class of 2022, do God's work. Use your energy to warm up the world, and do I dare say, light the world on fire. Class of 2022, ride into the sunset of God's warm embrace. My heart will go on without you, but it may skip a beat or two. I love you, class of 2022. It has been a pleasure to serve you.
Gotta clap. Man, COVID really has our social cues off. <laughs> At this time, I would like to invite up to our stage our class salutatorian, Miss Anais Espinosa. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anais Espinosa, and I'm here to welcome you all to the celebration of the class of 2022. It is an honor to speak to you all. First and foremost, I would like to tell you a little story. When I first heard I was gonna be salutatorian, I was so incredibly happy, but then I realized that I had to make a speech. This terrified me. However, I had expectations that I would finish the speech early enough to where I could fix it if needed so it could be perfect. I wanted this speech to be perfect for graduation because I'm sure like many others, they also wanted graduation to be perfect or at least not take that long so they can go home. I had all these expectations for how my speech was going to sound or when it would be done, and let's just say those expectations did not happen. I wrote my speech one week before graduation and I wasn't even sure if I liked it. This made me realize that we all have expectations for anything we do. We all came into high school having expectations for the next four years at Bishop Knoll, and now, as we sit here today, we all have expectations for what our future is going to look like. Looking back at my four years in high school, I had many big expectations. The biggest one would have to be the high school would not go by as, ever, as fast as everyone says it does. Let me just tell you, it did. I also expected that this would be the best years of my life, I would ace every class, and that I was gonna stay friends with people I came into high school with. However, I had many ups and downs during high school. I didn't ace every class, and I stopped being friends with some people, but I gained new friendships with others. I was not the only one who had certain expectations for their years at BNI. Emma Thrasher said that she expected high school to be more nerve wracking and that teachers were going to be a lot scarier. But once you get used to the people, workload and teachers, high school becomes a lot more enjoyable and goes by extremely fast. Josh Perez said that he expected to be 6'3 in high school, but he's only 5'8". Abby Wojtaszek said that she expected to take a lot of art classes, but instead she discovered that theater was her passion. Octavio Bautista said that he expected high school to be a breeze, but in reality, high school was a tough but rewarding journey that taught him new aspects of life. It is interesting to realize that a lot of our expectations didn't happen, but instead these four years took us by surprise many, many times. As a class, we had certain expectations for how the layout of our years at Bishop Noah was going to look like. And I know a lot of what happened we didn't expect. For example, COVID-19. But let me not get into that. I know we are all tired of hearing how much COVID affected us. However, this applies outside of school as well. Every single one of us went through something, good or bad, that we never would expect it to happen. Same with things going on in our country. A lot of things happened that we never would have thought. For example, we as a society didn't have expectations that the number one leading death for children since 2020 are now guns. Before it was car accidents. We all had these expectations for how our life was gonna work or how society is going to look like. How our next four years at Bishop Noah was going to look. And even though a lot of what we expected didn't happen or didn't go exactly as planned, that uh, things that were least expected turned out to be the most memorable. With our good and bad expectations, we don't always know exactly what the outcome is going to be. But that's just how life works. Our expectations most of the time don't happen exactly how we want, which is why as humans, we learn how to adapt and grow as necessary which is exactly what we did, class of 2022. We learned that even when the world turned on its axis, we adapted and got through the situation as best we could. 
Also, any issues we went through as a class or individually, we adapted our expectations and grew to best get through the situations, which is what I believe our class is really known for, growing and adapting to situations that are thrown at us. However, a lot of the time, we have help from those around us who show us how to adapt and grow. So I want to say a few thank yous. Thank yous to the teachers, staff, Mrs. Patrick, and Mr. Cavazos, who showed us how to not lose faith, especially when things don't go as planned. Thank you to parents and families who have helped in every way possible. All the things you all did, big or small, made a very big impact in our lives and showed us how to grow. I would like to thank all those who took the time to make sure this graduation happens. I would also like to recognize and thank the three teachers who are also leaving and onto a new part of their lives. Thank you to Ms. B for planning our masses and retreats as they are a big part of our religious journey. Thank you to Ms. Skirka for growing our curiosity in every way. Thank you to Mrs. Morasses for teaching with passion and heart. I would like to personally thank my parents for guiding me through the good and bad times and showing me incredible strength that I now use to adapt to the situation that life throws at me. I am forever grateful that you show me that even when things don't go as planned, I can still find happiness in the outcome. And of course, thank you to my classmates. I have the privilege of saying you're the best class to graduate with, and you have truly shown me what it means to grow. I know you all, every single one of you, are going to live beautiful lives, and I hope it is filled with nothing but happiness, because it is what you all deserve. Nothing is the same as it was, and this should be a good thing, because we have a whole future where we can expect life to surprise us in different ways. And we can expect to grow as people and slowly see how the puzzle pieces of our lives are fitting together. Finally, I want to end with a piece of advice for all of you, and I hope I can learn to apply it to my life as well. Even with all the expectations we may have for how our future is going to look, we have to learn how to enjoy the process of getting to the end results. The process of learning how to grow and adapt, whether that be by ourselves or with those around us. And always remember, what we least expect tends to be the most memorable. Thank you. I would like to ask our student representative, Mr. Eric Kloplin, to come up for a word of gratitude. Good evening, everyone. No, we go, we go try that again. Let me remind you, this is a place of celebration. Good evening, everyone. Now I can begin. My name is Eric Copeland, your student body president. It's such an honor to speak in front of you today. I was told to keep this at or under five minutes, but when it comes to support of the parents and the family, I can go on for hours, but I won't do that. I cannot believe I'm standing here in front of you today in my cap and gown. I cannot believe that the four years that I thought were gonna go nice and slow are now over. Class of 2022, we made it. Teachers, we made it. Families, we made it. We all made it. Yes, we all made it to the finish line of another lap. But I'm standing up here to talk to you right now about our families to applaud and thank you for your commitment to standing at your graduate side throughout the wavy and rocky four years of high school. You, the parents, guardians, grandparents, aunts, uncles, etc., are one of the main reasons we are blessed to walk across this stage today. But let me start with the teachers real quick, okay? You may not be our parents, but you sure played an important role in supporting us. Now, I know Anais kind of hinted at we don't like talking about COVID, but let's talk about how much you've done for us since the COVID era began. Teachers, you had to completely change 
the way you teach your students. And you adapted to the world just as much as we did. But the truth is, we as students didn't honestly know and understand the amount of stress, strain, and effort it took to make that, transaction, that transition. It was such a hard time put on you as an educator. I want to take the time to acknowledge the hard work and sacrifices you made to continue your passion for education. We greatly appreciate your dedication and your faith and love that kept pushing through for us. Now to my families, we simply cannot thank you enough. Not only have you been there and supported your child, but you have been there for the rest of us as a whole through your generous donations. You've helped fund different events by bringing in money or donated items. I know my grandmother brought in lots of those. <laughs> Took time out of your busy schedules to do some volunteer work or just supported us from afar. Every contribution you have made has made a ripple effect impacting our entire class of 2022. You have been a source of both inspiration and support and a place of comfort in our times of need. Bless your hearts for listening to us complain about virtual learning when we were stuck in a house, probably getting on your absolute last nerve, and when it was, wasn't during virtual learning, thank you for being there to listen when we needed a listening ear and supporting us when we needed help the most. The class of 2022 would not be where we are today without each and every one of you working to ra ra raise us up to this occasion. To my family, I give you all a huge shout out for being my biggest supporters and uplifting me when I needed it the most. There were times where I felt hopeless and I wanted to give up, but all of you reminded me that I've come this far by faith and we've all come this far by faith. And I give a huge shout out to my bonus sisters, Priscilla and Dahlia, for helping me through my four years of high school. So all of you, teachers, parents, grandparents, guardians, aunts, uncles, whoever you are out there, as I come to a close, look around, pat yourselves on the back, and remind yourself that we all made it to the finish line of another lap. Remember, today is the end of one journey, and tomorrow is the start of another one. I now invite my classmate, Melissa Carlos, to share her word of gratitude. Hola, bienvenidos y buenas tardes a todos. Me llamo Melissa Carlos y es un placer poder hablar en frente de mis compañeros que se gradúan junto a mí. El día que todos pensábamos que nunca llegaría, al fin ha llegado. Estos últimos cuatro años han pasado más rápido de lo que me había podido imaginado. Han sido cuatro años muy interesantes, llenos de muchos obstáculos. Pero a través de nuestras lágrimas, el estrés y las largas noches de estudio, lo hicimos. Así que felicidades, logramos llegar al final. Sin embargo, este gran logro no hubiera sido posible sin el apoyo de nuestros maestros, nuestras amistades y nuestros padres. Quiero empezar por darle las gracias a todos los maestros que nos instruyeron en nuestra vida desde el kinder hasta ahora. Ellos han sido un apoyo a cada paso que hemos dado para llegar hasta este punto. Pero en especial, quiero agradecer a nuestros maestros de los pasados cuatro años que tuvieron que lidiar con nosotros, específicamente durante el COVID, que como sabemos todos, cambió nuestro mundo. Especialmente quiero dar las gracias por ser pacientes con nosotros, al entender que no ha sido fácil por los ambos lados. La pandemia revolucionó la forma de aprender y de enseñar. Ver a maestros y a compañeros por una pantalla fue difícil, pero su determinación y el amor a su trabajo lo hicieron posible. 
Ustedes son demasiadamente importantes y quiero que sepan que sus esfuerzos no fueron en vano. Sinceramente, gracias por todo. También quiero agradecer a todas nuestras amistades que estuvieron con nosotros dándonos una mano cuando lo necesitábamos. Agradezco los momentos divertidos que pasábamos juntos, en los bailes, los juegos, los retiros y los momentos en los que hablábamos en la cafetería. Pero no podemos olvidar a los amigos que nos ayudaron a estudiar o a revisar un trabajo, a los que nos echaban porras en los juegos o en una obra teatral, a todos esos amigos que nos dieron ánimos cuando no teníamos energía para seguir, a todas esas amistades que nos levantaron cuando nosotros no pensábamos que podíamos. Pero sobre todo, hay que agradecer a nuestros familiares, nuestros tíos y tías, nuestros primos y hermanos, por simplemente estar a nuestro lado. Finalmente, quiero agradecer a los que siempre han estado ahí desde el principio, los que fueron nuestros primeros maestros, los que nos enseñaron a hablar, caminar y a montar una bicicleta, los que desde el kinder siempre estuvieron ahí, nos ayudaron a aprender a contar hasta 10, nos explicaron qué eran las matemáticas cuando no entendía, entendíamos que 4 más 4 era 8. En la primaria nos ayudaron a aprender la tabla de multiplicación, nos ayudaron a aprender cómo abrocharnos nuestros zapatos, en la secundaria nos ayudaron con nuestros proyectos, nos llevaron a nuestras prácticas de deportes y finalmente en la prepa estuvieron ahí para escucharnos y darnos una mano. Estuvieron ahí para darnos consejos, nos enseñaron cómo manejar y siempre cubrían nuestras espaldas. Y pues bueno, a pesar de todas las ayudas, los que siempre han estado ahí desde el principio fueron nuestros padres. Algunos de nosotros llegamos sin hablar inglés, otros somos los primeros que van a ir a la universidad, pero todos somos el reflejo del esfuerzo y el sacrificio de nuestros padres. Sin ellos, nosotros no hubiéramos llegado hasta este punto. Yo quisiera agradecer en especial a mi mamá, Mirna Carlos, y a mi papá, Eliseo Carlos, les quiero dar las gracias a ustedes por siempre darme su apoyo, por todos sus consejos, por motivarme a siempre dar lo mejor que pueda, por escucharme, tolerarme, por tenerme paciencia y especialmente por el cariño y el amor que siempre me han hecho sentir. Los quiero mucho y de todo corazón, gracias por todo. Pues, pues, pues. Al igual, sé que mis compañeros también tienen a personas especiales que agradecen. Para mí son mis padres. Tal vez sea su mamá, su papá, sus abuelos, un primo, una tía o un hermano. Y esas personas especiales les quiero dar las gracias a través de mis compañeros. Sin su apoyo no hubiéramos llegado hasta este punto. Gracias. At this time, I ask all my fellow seniors to grab their roses from under your chair and please present them to the person you feel impacted you most throughout your high school career.
I would now like to ask our president, Paul Mullaney, to come up to introduce our commencement speaker. Thank you, Mrs. Pastrick, and good evening, everyone. I have the honor to introduce tonight, as our commencement speaker, one of my Bishop Knoll classmates who like thousands of other warrior graduates, has left this special place and has gone out to do great things. Mary Clusas Pontillo was the youngest of five Clusas children to attend BNI, growing up just a couple blocks away on Wegg Avenue and walking here to high school in the 70s. I believe it is truly fitting, after we have seen the heroic and committed efforts of nurses and teachers these past couple years, that tonight we recognize an accomplished individual who serves as both a nurse and a teacher. An Indiana University nursing student, Mary's first job after graduation was working at Riley Children's Hospital in Indianapolis. Following in the pediatric footsteps of Dr. Richard Schreiner, an accomplished chairman of pediatrics and another Bishop Knoll alumnus, whose life-size statue today greets patients of Riley Hospital for Children at the IU Health Center in Indianapolis. Like Dr. Schreiner, Mary would embark on a career that would recognize the importance of neonatal education. After a year at Riley, in 1982, Mary returned to her roots in Lake County and began a stint at Community Hospital in Munster that, 40 years later, is as impactful as ever. Mary now serves as a neonatal nurse clinician, which means she is not only a fully licensed nurse, but she is certified to educate medical professionals, parents, and others on the important and proper ways to love, care for, and treat babies, a nurse, and a teacher. Her work includes a wide range of functions, from serving as a registered nurse in the neonatal intensive care to teaching parents the best ways to ensure that their newborn is not a victim of sudden infant death syndrome. She is so good at what she does that in 2018, four years ago, she was honored as Caregiver of the Year throughout the entire state of Indiana. That same year, she was named Community Hospitals Nurse of the Year. Her educational efforts as nurse clinicians serve all of the hospitals in the community system, including St. Catharines in East Chicago and St. Mary's in Hobart, and all the families whose children are born there. Though Mary is the first to share any credit with all those she works alongside, there is no doubt her inspiration to make a difference has paid dividends. One important statistic she doesn't lose sight of is that of infant mortality, the death of a baby before his or her first birthday. When Mary started her educational efforts locally here as a nurse clinician, our Northwest region of the state had the highest infant mortality rate, in other words, the worst rate, of any of Indiana's 11 regions. Today, our Northwest region has the second lowest, or in other words, second best, infant mortality rate out of the 11 regions. One can't help but think that the efforts of inspired and faith-filled professionals like Mary Pontillo and those on her community hospital teams are a big reason for that improvement. 
But the work is not done, and Mary will be the first to tell you that. So she continues today to educate on the importance of healthy babies and being a champion to give all babies the opportunity for a healthy start to a healthy life. Nurse, educator, difference maker, a true warrior, please join me in welcoming to the podium Mary Clusas Pontillo. Okay, thank you very much. I, I'll take my mask off now. I'm sorry, I'm a nurse. I wear a mask all the time. Can you all hear me? Yes, you guys can hear me? Okay, gotta make sure. Now I gotta be able to see you. So hold on, I'm coming. <laughs> okay, I am so thrilled to be here today. I'm back home. I have not been back in the field house probably um, since my graduation. 45 years ago, sorry, it, it's been a while. And I sat in these very seats and, and we were so excited about what was about to happen. We were going to graduate. It is so good to be home. Like, I, like Paul was saying, I grew up not far from here with, in a house with a green roof on Wegg Avenue. I went to St. Stan's. I was part of the Bishop Knoll community early on. My, all four of my other siblings attended Bishop Knoll. My dad was here when it was Catholic Central. And actually, it was during the Depression, and he paid for his tuition by sweeping the floors after school. My mom was the cook here, okay? And I didn't tell anybody, nobody, because that was not cool. That chef special, <laughs> it was not something I could do, no. Sloppy Joe's, no. I knew what went in it. I brown bagged it all the time. But my mom worked here for many years as the cook. So, you know, I, it is. I'm coming back home. B&I was part of my life from the beginning. I am so incredibly honored to be here with you today, to be part of this big celebration. You guys, you did it. You did it! This is awesome! Oh my God! That is amazing! Good job! To the faculty and the staff and the administration, you guys, they did it! They did it! And you have got them there. To the families, parents and guardians, they did it! They did it! They did it! Talk about a gamut of emotions. So many things that are all balled up in here today. There's excitement. There's feelings of pride. There's apprehension. Maybe just a little bit of fear. But we're closing a chapter, a closing a chapter that has been very good, and we're on to another one that's going to provide even more excitement. I'm here to tell you it's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. Like I told you, I was there. I sat in that seat. And you know what? It's been a great ride because I'm a warrior. You're a warrior. We learned how to do this because we got this wonderful beginning. So how can I say this so confidently? Because 45 years ago when I was here, I had Mr. Peichel in chemistry too and Sister Imelda in calculus. And let me tell you, it was brutal. It was brutal. And there were times I was in tears outside Mr. Peichel's chemistry class. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And he sat me down, and he pretty much said, suck it up, buttercup. You can do it. You got it. You dig down deep, and you find it, because you can do it. He believed in me more than I was believing in myself. And you know what? I did. I did. I sat down. I finally got my act together. I figured it out, and I did it. I got through that chemistry, and I got through that calculus, and German 4, and all the rest of my curriculum. I did it. Because you know what? I'm a warrior, and that's what we do. We dig deep, and we go for it. We don't let adversary get in our way. When I was here, I was a palm, and that's what I brought up with me. I have something that's very near and dear to my heart. I gotta show you. 
I am not putting it on. It is my winter coat, so no way am I going to put this on. But this was my B&I palm jacket, and we were part of the, one of the first groups that started out as the palms. There it is with all my chevrons in 1977 on there. And I wore it proudly because of what it represented. You see, we were not a professional dance group. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think any of us ever took any dance lessons. We were a motley group, and we just worked hard. That's all we did. We were always out in the hallway outside here or over by the auditorium working on our routines, just thinking of crazy things that we could do at half times. We dressed up like Christmas pockets, boxes and snowflakes and did all kinds of crazy things. But we worked hard and we were there for each other. And when someone wasn't getting the routine, we worked with our individuals, we worked together so that we could become something great. We also collaborated with the band and I can remember on Friday nights, we would be lining up in the hallway right out here and the band would start their, or the drums would start their cadence and we would get ready to march out that hallway, out to the field. And it was, the sound would just reverberate in those hallways. It was an awesome memory because we were all working together to something good. Why did we do that? Because we're warriors. We know how to work hard together and how to support each other and bring each other to our greatness. I also did things in the theater. I was not on the stage. Oh, no, no, no. Can't, can't sing, can't act, can't do that. Uh-uh. I was the costume girl in the back. I was the one who was supporting the cast on the stage. At the end of the production, they always got the applause. We kind of listened through the curtains to hear that kind of sense of, yay, you did it. It wasn't a glamorous job, but it was one that had to be done. And why did we do it? Because we're warriors, and that's what we do. We had the first overnight senior retreats. And boy, what a powerful experience. I'm here that you also experience those same things with your Kairos. Did I say that right? Did I say, okay. Very powerful, very, a very personal experience that you have with your, with your peers and your relationship with God. It gave us a time for self-reflection, time for discovery about yourself, inside and out, and learning more about each other, and then learning about unconditional love, that and realizing everyone is not perfect, but we can still love you. And then seeking further, finding out that that same relationship exists with God, that he loves us unconditionally, and that he's always there with us. What, a, what an experience. <laughs> And why did we do it? Because we're warriors, and that's what we do. So now, yeah, I go on to life. I go to IUPUI. I become a Jaguar. Yeah. I went to, later in life to Indiana Wesleyan. I was a wildcat. Yeah. All right. But you know what? I bleed blue and gold. I am a warrior, and that is the passion that I've had throughout my life. Marriage, family, career, in general, it's all been good. I've, we've had our ups and downs throughout life, but I have to be honest with you, I got through it all and got where I am today because I'm a warrior. I knew that God was always beside me and sometimes leading me and sometimes even having to carry me, but I knew he was always there. I always knew I had to look hard and dig deep to find the strength that I needed to get through those crises. And when it was time to celebrate, it was time to celebrate with everyone, not just a single person or a single group. And why? You know the answer, come on, you know it. Because I'm a warrior, forever a warrior. So when I told my family and my siblings that I was gonna be here tonight, you know, they're so brutal. They're just so brutal. So, yeah, you know, they offered a lot of free advice of what to say, uh, what not to say. Um, and some of it was pretty ruthless. They said things like, be quick, uh, talk fast, because they don't want to listen. Um, don't, be, don't say anything stupid. Don't embarrass us. Mm, you know, typical family kind of supportive things. Um, and one thing they did say is they're not going to remember what you talk about tonight. So they said, don't, you know, just move it along. 
No, 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 that's not how I operate. I want to prove them wrong. I want the us to prove them wrong because I want you to remember that not necessarily my name or who I am, but I want you to remember what I'm saying. I want you to remember that you are a warrior. Four simple words. Every day, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and you pull your, your, yourself up and you say, I am a warrior. And remember what that means, strength, perseverance, love of, your, of others, and of God. It's okay. We're going to try this. You know, I'm a, I am a nurse. I am a teacher. I always do interactive things. Nobody ever sits still in my class, okay? Nobody does. Okay, so now it's on you. You're going to work with me on this, and I want to hear it. Who are you? Yeah. All right, now, let's do this again. we got some more to do because we're going gonna to prove my family wrong, all right? Now, every morning, what are you going to say? There you are. That's good. But now, you know what? You could do it even better. Who are you? I am. Come on. Come on. You can do better than that. Prove it to these guys. Let them know that you are ready to go into the world. Come on. Who are you? I am. That's it. That's it. Now. <laughs> you got it. Yes. Good job, good job. Remember that, remember that always. You're not just a warrior, you're a B&I warrior. Always, always and forever. So class of 2022, congratulations. The world's waiting for you, warriors. Good luck. <laughs>
um, is joining us virtually, um, as she could not be here um, due to not feeling well. Um, but Ms. Skirka, in a very true sense, echoes what our commencement speaker spoke of, what it means to be a warrior. I was able to work with Ms. Skirka as a teacher, and she worked here when I was a student. Um, and one of the things that I admired about her most was her work ethic that you also hit on. Ms. Skirka was like a true warrior, old girl on top of the pyramid of the cheerleading um, and the top of the pyramid in a lot of the school events as a teacher. So Ms. Skirka, I know you're not with us. We didn't bring flowers because we knew you weren't going to be here, but um, we owe you flowers. Um, you are loved and you are a true warrior. Thank you for your 33 years of service. And now is the time that we've all been waiting for. I will invite the graduates of the class of 2022 to receive their Bishop Knoll diplomas. Out of respect for every family and student present, I politely ask that you hold your applause until all graduates have received their diplomas. Every family and student deserves to hear their name and their accomplishments. So please be respectful to all those around you. In addition, please do not approach the stage with any flash photography, as students are already being professionally photographed now I would like to invite Mrs. Patricia Aguila Castellanos to the stage to present our 2022 graduates. Francisco Mateo Aguilera, South Suburban College, Core 40 Diploma. <laughs> Taj Nazir Alfer, Trade School Griffith Aviation, Inc., Core 40 Diploma. Adriana Marie Alvarez, Purdue University Northwest Academic Honors Diploma, magna cum laude. Giancarlo Angel, Ball State University Academic Honors Diploma, magna cum laude. Alvaro Araiza, Ball State University Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Kayla Marie Arambula, University of Illinois Chicago Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Ahmad Luther Artis, Don Bosco Prep Core 40 Diploma. Angel Avalos, Purdue University Northwest Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Christian Ayala, Indiana University Bloomington Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Octavio Bautista, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. James Alex Xavier Beasley, Trade School, IBEW 141 Electricians, Core 40 Diploma. Tammy Lori Lynn Bennett, Indiana University Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude.
Fatima Baruman, Indiana University Northwest Academic Honors Diploma, magna cum laude. Michael Lee Burton III, Core 40 Diploma. Camille Lynette Cadwell, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Danelli Shanae Campbell, South Suburban College Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. <laughs> Melissa Carlos, Indiana University Northwest Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Romeo Cassiano, Ball State University Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Gabriela Isabel Chavez, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, Core 40 Diploma. Addison Rebecca Sipkowski, Indiana University, Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Eric Samuel Copeland, Jr., Wabash College, Core 40 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Aliyah M. Crawford, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Taylor Marie Daphnis, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academ Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Kyle Anthony Elkins, Tryon University, Core 40 Diploma. <laughs> Anais Lisset Espinosa, University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Willie Earl Fagan, Core 40 Diploma. Everett Fair, Ball State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Ariana Juanita Flores, American Art Academy, Core 40 Diploma. Carlos Franco, Core 40 Diploma. Anna Montserrat Franco, Indiana University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Carla Veronica Franco, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. <laughs> Gerardo Enrique Garcia, Ivy Tech Community College, Core 40 Diploma. Jacqueline Garcia, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Jaden Gilmore, Tryon University, Core 40 Diploma. Rebecca Gudinas, Trade School Core 40 Diploma. <laughs> Anthony Joseph Gonzalez, Ivy Tech Community College, Core 40 Diploma.
Miguel Gonzalez, Indiana University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Abigail Kate Heinz, Indiana University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Adrian Ivan Hernandez, Indiana University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Genesis Alondra Hernandez, Ball State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Daniel Xavier Huerta, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Craig Anthony Hutton, Core 40 Diploma. Lane William Crask, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Antoine Mason Lewis, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Angel Omar Lopez, United States Navy, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Ethan Daniel Lopez, University of Illinois, Champaign, Urbana, Academic Honors Diploma, Sum Cum Laude. Jose Eduardo Lopez, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Emily Elizabeth Lynch, Indiana University Fort Wayne, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Olivia Annette Magallon, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Millie Magana, Indiana University Bloomington, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Richelle Micaiah Mallory, Alabama State University, Core 40 Diploma. Angela Nicole Martinez, Trade School, Don Roberts School of Hair Design, Core 40 Diploma. Carolina Martinez, Indiana University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Priscilla Monique Martinez, Indiana University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Alexandra Estela Mejia, San Jacinto Community College, Core 40 Diploma. Sherry Jennifer Mahalik, Dominican University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Sofia Cruz Miranda, Indiana University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. <laughs> Dalia Moedano, Indiana University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Madison Amari Mosley, Indiana University Bloomington, Core 40 Diploma. Oh. 
Lise Lent Munoz, Indiana University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Jorge Emanuel Murillo, Trade School Core 40 Diploma. Nalea Ochoa, Prairie View A&M University, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Matthew Aaron Odegaard, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Jesus Olagues, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Coyote Mark Ola Oye, Purdue University West Lafayette Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Damien Xavier Ontiveros, Purdue University Northwest Core 40 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Zaid Alejandro Ortega, Purdue University Northwest Core 40 Diploma. Alex G. Ortiz, Core 40 Diploma, 21st Century Scholar. Miguel Palmarin, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Danielle Violet Povichovich, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Bianca Elizabeth Perez, DePaul University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Ball State University, Core 40 Diploma, Foundations of East Chicago Scholarship. Joshua Rai Perez, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Zachary Jacob Plebanski, Western Michigan University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Sarai Quesada Pareja, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Sitsiki Rangel, West, East West University, Chicago, Core 40 Diploma. Yosmalis Rivera, Ball State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Ciara Aaron Robinson, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Aliana Marie Rogers, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, Core 40 Diploma. Jacob Abraham Rosa, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Diego Josue Ruiz, Purdue University West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Matthew Ryan Salazar, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Rexana Daniela Salazar, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude.
Vanessa Celine Salazar, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Catherine F. Sella, Ball State University, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Kaylee Ann Sims, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Nestor Cuda Soto, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Armani Lee Spring, Western Illinois University, Core 40 Diploma. Darcy Aaron Staley, Grand Valley State University, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Michael Giovanni Tavolati, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Emma Grace Thrasher, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Maribel Joanna Torres, North Park University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Maya Angelis Trinidad, Ivy Tech Community College, Core 40 Diploma. Dreante Upshaw, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Flavio Cesar Vega, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Joshua David Viscara, Purdue University Northwest, Core 40 Diploma. Jacob A. Washington, Purdue University Northwest, Academic Honors Diploma, Cum Laude. Julieta Marie Wedrick, DePaul University, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. Abigail Jane Votashik, Mary St. Mary's College, Academic Honors Diploma, Summa Cum Laude. Jacqueline Woolley, Core 40 Diploma, Cum Laude. Pablo Savala, Academic Honors Diploma, Magna Cum Laude. I now invite our class valedictorian, Abigail Wojtaszek, to the front of the stage to lead you in the tassel turn. Class of 2022, please rise. Short but appropriate message. You can do all things through him who strengthens me. Faculty, staff, friends, I proudly present to you the class of 2022. You may move your tassels.
class valedictorian, Miss Abigail Wojtaszek, the stage is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Pastrick. I will preemptively apologize if I start clanking. I have a lot of jewelry on me right now, so if it bothers the speech, I'm so sorry. All right, so. I'm gonna move the speech around because it is not where I like it. All right, guys. Hi, everyone. Good evening. It is such an honor to be here tonight amongst not only the class of 2022, but the parents, family, and faculty that helped each and every one of us students achieve our graduation. I know you all have been well thanked by now, but please, let me extend another moment of gratitude to you. As Mrs. Pastrick has reminded us in the days leading up to this evening, graduation is not only about us, the students, but everyone who has led us on the path of completing high school. Truly, thank you. I will be completely honest with you all. I was very unsure of what to say in my address tonight. I have written numerous speeches in the past month for various events, but this is the one that left me the most intimidated. It's not the number of people or insecurity in my writing ability, but simply a feeling that I was not fit to speak to you all. And so, in my typical fashion, I turned to music to guide my thoughts and sort out my anxieties. For many, if not all of us, we have used music to get through high school, and in fact, it's one of my favorite ways I've been able to connect with our class. We've recommended songs through conversation, made playlists for class assignments, turned up speakers and added songs to the queue at our own tables during lunch. The power of music and lyricism was present throughout our Kairos experiences, if you know, you know. And some of us even have the talent to create our own music and share it with the world. Putting AirPods in and tuning out the insanity of life has been a way that many of us have both coped and connected despite a high school experience that was uniquely isolating. And when I began to put my fingers to my four-year-old iPad keyboard, I turned some music on. I was met with a song that I was very familiar with, Nothing New. For those of you betting on if I was going to make a Taylor Swift reference in my speech today, rest assured that you know me all too well. How could I not reference Taylor, NYU's most recent recipient of an honorary doctorate? Nothing New came out of the vault of the Red Album re-recording this past November, and the song quickly became the anthem of my senior year. What stood out to me most was the line, How can a person know everything at 18, but nothing at 22? How perfectly does that line up with us being the class of 2022? We all came into Bishop Knoll in 2018, fresh off the high that leaving middle school gave us. The freshman class always has a reputation of thinking that they know it all. And as much as we weren't bad as the classes that followed us, we still had a bit of that belief. We were the kings of middle school, and we carried that mindset through these doors with us. But ugh, how we were violently humbled. We may have thought we knew exactly what to expect in high school, but no one truly knew what was coming. Our childhood assurance that we were in control of everything was soon to be disillusioned. Generally, our freshman year was pretty standard. We learned we were not, in fact, the top dogs we believed we were, survived our first high school papers in Mrs. Laird's English class, and discovered the wonderful array of extracurriculars and sports provided to us. We cheered and celebrated our state soccer win and spent every Wednesday night frantically trying to both listen to and write about Father Mike's latest podcast episode for Mrs. Fredrickson. We were all in the same boat, simply trying to navigate our way through the sometimes treacherous waters of high school. And every single one of us here made it through. Sophomore year started all the same as before, homecoming events, sports games, concerts, and performances alike. The class of 2022 had our footing now. We knew who we were. There was a confidence in our place at Bishop Knoll because we proved with our survival of the first year that we could do anything. Hey, we were the tug of war champs of the 2019 pep rally, and Mr. Driscoll will never let us forget that. We were a proud group of kids slowly beginning to be connected in our own way. But then, and I truly hate to be the one to bring it up, that connectivity was met with a brick wall. Our bedrooms became classrooms, our iPads the only way to see our fellow classmates. The blossoming of a class starting to feel like a family was cut short by a pandemic. We had ways to bond through scavenger hunts for Mr. Driscoll and game nights hosted by Mr. Bergen, but nothing was quite the same as the ways we connected when in the building. We took finals from our beds and watched the world turn upside down. But every single one of us here made it through. 
Junior year brought a mixed bag of, well, everything. Nothing was normal. Was this the new normal? We all hoped it wasn't. None of us enjoyed masks and distance and the space forced between one another. Some of us came back to the building, some of us stayed at home, and each group had its own struggles. Those at home definitely had a loneliness, only regularly seeing their fellow students through hard to manage Zoom calls. And while those at school thought being in the building might have fared them better, the measures meant to keep us safe brought its own unique isolation that was never quite removed. But we constantly tried to find unity in such division around us. We had events to bring us together, a centennial movie night and outdoor lunch celebration, and things like theater performances and band concerts still went on. We found joy in events like Feel Good Fridays and Spirit Days. We even found ways to help the community, such as the newly elected NHS officers, including six members of the class of 2022, organizing a bake sale in the middle of finals week in order to aid the Carmelite home after its devastating fire. Despite that school year being anything but normal, there was still a hopeful end to junior year. And every single one of us here made it through. Here we are, senior year. Everything was falling into place all at once. Future plans were being decided and scholarships being accepted. And our final year, the class of 2022, truly embodied the Bishop Noel motto of mind, body, soul. We had soaring academic achievements this year with 19 graduates with distinction. Adriana Alvarez and Coyote Olaoye made BNI speech and debate history with their wins at state this March. Coyote being the first boy from Bishop Knoll to make it that far in recent history. And Adriana being the first among our team to place as high as she did in programmed oral interpretation, notoriously one of the most hardest speech events. Our student athletes excelled in their fields of expertise and even signed on to collegiate sports. Sherry Mahalik will be playing basketball at Dominican University next year. And Abigail Heinz signed to Indiana University Northwest to continue her soccer career. And both Edison Mosley and I were part of the girls' golf conference win this past September. But what truly brought our class together was faith. We were the class to bring Kairos retreats back to Bishop Knoll after a nearly 20-month hiatus. We got to experience the final high school retreats that our beloved campus minister, Ms. B, so lovingly organized. As a class, we have been a living sign of the handiwork of Bishop Knoll. Whereas once we had all of our firsts, now was the year of our lasts. We had our last first day of school, our last homecoming, our last sports games and performances, all capped off at senior nights. We've had our last high school finals, hallelujah, and our last all school math. We even became the last graduating class to experience Ms. Skirka's classroom presence and enjoy her jokes of the day. We finished it all. We may be the 101st graduating class, but we are the 100th class to learn on these grounds as the class of 1923 began learning in makeshift classrooms on this land in September of 1922. A hundred years of history is under our feet, and we stand on the shoulders of all of those students before us. As Taylor sang, we knew everything at 18, but nothing at 22. While we have retained some things from our education, math equations and how to write a check, we know nothing of exactly what the future holds for us. College or trades or any other plans are a great unknown, no matter how much we can meticulously prepare. We just have to trust in the process and trust in God. We're all in the same boat once again, looking to a future that may seem exciting, yet scary. But here's where I diverge from my great musical inspiration. We do know one thing. I do know one thing, and I want to impart that on you. We are the catalysts for change in the world. You are the catalysts for change in the world. We all hold the power to be a force for good, and the only thing keeping it locked up is our disbelief that we have such a thing. Your voice can shake the ground and create where there is nothing. Never let anyone, especially yourself, diminish that power. If you have learned only one thing, if you have gained only one lesson from these four years, let it be that you and your beliefs are important. You have value, and that value creates a richer world around you. You are the good in the world, so be that light. Be that light of Christ for others. I'm not fond of quoting old academic men or other typical intellectuals that valedictorians like to cite, you know, quite obviously, since I literally quoted a pop musician with the seriousness as if it were Albert Einstein. So instead, I will leave you with two pearls of wisdom from two people I love so dearly, I consider them a second set of parents. You know who you are. 
These are the most important lessons I have gained from them. Firstly, always stay true to your passions. Let the things you love in life guide what you do. Hold true to what makes you smile, what makes you want to get up in the morning, what compels you to speak about it for hours. In what can be a draining and unhappy adult world, wear are your passions on your sleeve. And perhaps, what I think is just as important, if not more, is to be kind to yourself. Your next steps in life will no doubt be challenging. You will face hardships and sometimes make mistakes that you may regret. Throughout all of this, I want you to promise to yourself, right now, that you will be kind to yourself. I'll give you all, even the family and faculties in the crowd, a moment of silence to make that promise. There. No matter what happens next in your life, know that you are worthy of all that is good. You are enough. My wonderful classmates, I am so proud of you. I am so proud of all of us for making it to this moment. Every single one of us here has made it through. Remember how we've suggested songs to each other throughout our four years together? Well, here's my suggestion for you. It's called Daylight, and it's from Taylor's seventh album, Lover. You can listen to the whole song after graduation, but I want to leave you with its final words, something that I want you to keep close as you journey throughout life. Taylor speaks, I want to be defined by the things that I love, not the things I hate, not the things I'm afraid of, not the things that keep me up in the middle of the night. I just think that you are what you love. Class of 2022, I implore you, don't be defined by hate. Be what you love. Thank you so much and good night. At this time, I call up our president to give the alumni ending speech. <laughs> So, the awesome class of 2022, our 99th graduation class here, I have the distinguished pleasure and honor to welcome you into the ranks of Bishop Knoll Institute alumni. I welcome each of you into this special association of more than 21,000 sisters and brothers who have graduated from this truly special place. You will be amazed in your future endeavors and travels, the number of times you'll be meeting Bishop Knoll graduates when you least expect it. We're all over the place. In fact, I know there's a number of you among us tonight, so will all of our alumni in attendance tonight, please, Bishop Knoll or Catholic Central, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. These special people, all of our BNI alumni, are making a difference day in and day out in their families, in their parishes, their communities, their fields of work, and throughout the world. They've been doing it for a century now. And they have been, as we've heard today, and now you as well will forever be known as BNI warriors. A among those special alumni are those who have returned this weekend as more than 100 members of the class of 1972 are celebrating their 50th reunion. And a few of them are with us this evening, and I ask if they would please stand again. So, so as they stand, I would like to recognize their class, which has just announced a new annual scholarship in honor of their classmates who have gone on to their eternal reward. The Class of 1972 Memorial Scholarship will recognize its first recipient of a $2,500 award next year, and the recipient to be named is sitting among our graduates tonight. Recognizing the significance of financial need of most students entering their second year of college, the class has chosen to help a Bishop Knoll graduate with tuition for their sophomore year of college. 
so specific application information will be released no later than the spring of next year. So let's give a round of applause for the Bishop Knoll class of 72. <clears throat> we hope you have a great rest of the weekend for your reunion. Um, and we hope that the members of the class of 22 will be as loyal to their alma mater as we have seen with the class of 72 and so many other classes as well that have come through our doors. Also, please remember that this is your home and we are family, so please come home and visit. Just give it a week or two, okay? Anyway, until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. May he bless you. We all love you. Congratulations, thank you, and God bless. And now for one final, very special benediction. Uh, one last time, our beloved campus minister, Ms. Stacia Bolakowski. I invite everyone to please stand. Let us unite our hearts in prayer and entrust to the hands of the Lord these beautiful individuals, these Bishop Knoll Institute graduates from the class of 2022. I invite our parents, guests, faculty, staff, everyone here to please extend your hands toward our graduates. Graduates, please bow your heads. May God, who began this good work in you, carry it through to completion, enabling you to use your talents to the fullest. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and to be faithful to your commitments, always confident in the support of those who love you. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep from within your hearts. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of others, so that you will always work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you will reach out your hand to comfort them and change their pain to joy. May God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in the world so that you will do the things that others will tell you can't be done. Graduates of the class of 2022, may your integrity be a gift to the world and may the Spirit of God be with you always. And may Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you, class of 2022.